I think there's a bit of an expectation at the school, like, you know, they've seen what's come before them. Um, they, you know, they, they have a lot to aspire to, so they, they push themselves quite hard. Like, to make, to make their team like the first 15 is, is quite a big honour. And, um, you know, that's what the kids ideally want to do. So, um, you know, they'll, they'll push themselves, they'll work hard to get there. And I guess along the way, they'll learn a lot of things and therefore they'll become better rugby players for it. In terms of their school level, uh, it's outstanding. They've got a fantastic work ethic as well. They're really good, determined uh, boys, and they and they're actually very self-motivated to, to push themselves. A lot of the, um, like with the coaching here, is just generally about organisation and giving them a, a style of play that sort of uh, that suits the, the different teams as they come along. Really. First and foremost, we're a public school, um, so we, we can't really offer uh, any scholarships of any sort. So. Um, the thing that we have gone for us is that you know boys and, and families want their boys to come here um, because we have you know such a strong rugby history. But what, what I first found was uh, just that everybody plays and coming to this school from I thought I was at quite uh, I was at a strong rugby school in the UK down in Ivorybridge, which was uh, part of the Exeter Chiefs Academy. But then coming here and looking out and seeing hundreds of boys playing rugby. At the time when I first arrived, I was coaching the, um, the 18 black, which is effectively the lowest uh, under 18 side when I first joined. And yet we'd still get 20 guys two or three times a week training and playing on Saturdays and having good and still being a good, a good side. And then that move up the following year into the first team, just the, um, yeah, the commitment and the school level is just uh, incredible here. But everyone, Everyone understands rugby and has an opinion. You sort of brought up the school level is um, really high. I mean, all our games um, are videoed, um, and then we um, we break all our games down, so we code them, um, whether it's set piece or um, our kick chase, or it might be we want to have a look at um, just our general attack pattern. Um, and it also goes as far now as to look in and see what the opposition are doing as well. So, um, you know, you can get footage on um, on how you plan the following week. So you sort of break down and sort of have an idea of what they're looking to do. And um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's very professional now. And, and I guess an uh, amateur school environment. But it's good because it's, um, you're giving the boys um, the best opportunity to, you know, um, sort of learn and, um, uh, it's important now to be breaking down the game and uh, more from a technical side of things. I mean, I'm speaking from personal experience, but you know, run catch passes is, is number one, really. If you can't do that, you can't play the game. So there's areas that I, I prioritise when I coach and I focus on. Um, obviously, every coach has different things they focus on as well, but run catch passes is right up there. That's a huge priority. Always got rubber balls in their hand. They're standing around just throwing it to themselves because that's just what boys do here. So their catch pass skills are, are very good. Um, so, but you still need to work at it. And that's one thing that I do here the whole time. They're not afraid. They will just practice the basics like endlessly. You'll see boys just passing the ball back and forth and simple stuff. And once they know that they understand that they're then able to have that skill set to really, to push the envelope with it. I mean, I guess a lot of rugby trainings in the past have just been all physical, and uh, there's always a, there's always going to be a lot of physical. But I think that's probably an area that we can excel a little bit. We're not always the biggest teams and the strongest teams, so we get our kids training as hard as they can. We try and sort of be one of the fittest teams going around, um, so we do a lot of work on that. Um, but we do try and challenge the boys a little bit, I guess, tactically. So we give them opportunities. Like I know when I coach, you know, I put the emphasis back on them. I put them in situations and make them come up with the decisions and the answers, and then you know, give them feedback on it. So, sort of, I guess, not being too robotic. It's a case of them understanding what they need to do and making decisions on that. And that's an area I think New Zealand has a really advantage. Um, you know, I've seen other international teams around the world, and they they do almost look robotic sometimes. So the fact New Zealand can teams can see what they're doing and act on their feet and make their own decisions, I think that's a really big big point in the way that, why they're so good in the game. <laughs> For a player, um, so after their pre they do a pretty heavy pre-season and then once the season starts they generally have a game every Saturday. There'll be every now and then they'll have a, a midweek game as well, depending if it's an inter-school exchange or if it's a catch-up game or something like that. So most weeks they'd have one game on the Saturday, but um, they would train probably two mornings um, in the gym. Uh, whether it's doing weights work or whether it's doing some conditioning work outside. Um, they would train three times after school, so they'll have two team trainings and a captain's run. 
So captain's runs normally on a Friday. Um, obviously just with the boys going through that. Um, and then obviously play on Saturday and uh, recovery on Sunday. So they often go to a pool session on a Sunday. So, you know, that's quite a heavy schedule for a amateur uh, player who's still got, you know, his school commitments, he's got his family, he's got potentially work commitments as well. So it is quite, it's quite large. Like we look to, um, I mean, you got, like we try and make our trainings obviously reasonably enjoyable as well. Um, but then there's an opportunity where we have at the end of training for the boys to go away and do individual work-ons. Um, and you know they do take it on board. I mean, at, the good thing is, at first 15 level, um, you're coaching guys that really want to be there and really want to go to that that next level. Um, so uh, yeah, there's no real lack of motivation uh, to improve their improve their skill. That's for sure. If you push things too hard at school and make it just rugby focused, that's when kids can lose interest. Um, that's when they've always prioritised that and then they leave school and they maybe get an injury or something doesn't work out, they throw their hands up and say, what do I do? Whereas having a good balance gives them opportunities outside of rugby, but also gives them the chance to excel in rugby. So I think that's really important. I, th I think it is quite a realistic goal, and if it's not an All Black, it could be a Crusader, or it could be an ITM Cup player, it could be just a professional and an athlete, and I think that's one thing we're seeing more and more, that that's a that's a pathway for them, it's a career, whereas you know maybe a few years ago that wasn't an option, whereas now actually being paid and being a professional rugby player is a huge option, so I think I think it is a goal for them. Um, I think a lot of them probably come in and think they're all going to be All Blacks, but you know not everyone can obviously, but seeing you know 46 All Blacks come through the school you know over its career, it shows that you know we do develop good rugby players and um, you know there is a real chance for them and I think that maybe gives them a bit of hope and it give, gives them a bit of aspiration to, to do that. In terms of Christchurch Boys High School, um, our haka is actually talking about our past and it goes right back into the time of around 1881 when we first started and one of the major lines in it it says kute kura o ngā tamata ne e pā ororo nei which means Christchurch Boys High School echoes from every generation. So it goes right back to that past to our first ever team in 1882, I believe it was. And so it talks about our past and helps the boys to, to pull that strength from essentially those who were ancestors within the school right up to the present day. Um, I, I get a bit worried that we will get left behind um, because we're a very amateur, we're in an amateur environment at this school, you know, we're a, we're a public school and, um, you know, our funding isn't, isn't huge, we don't give out scholarships, it's the boys that come in the gate, the boys we've got, you know, we can't go and target other individuals, so we, um, I get worried that other schools, that private schools that have the chance to give out scholarships, that have the resourcing and have the money and might start handpicking students, we might start losing some of our students. Um, yeah, I get worried that we will get left behind in that area.